Hey guys, welcome to another Excel video with bradegger.com and today we're looking at how we can use a data set that is in a table range uh, that so that we can create a data validation list and what we want to do is actually remove the duplicates from that list. So you'll see here that we have 04, 09, 2014, 10, 9, 2014. We want these duplicates that we see here. For example, we got 10 records uh, for 10, 9, 2014. We only want to show in our data validation list one of those and then skip over to the next record. So in order to do that, we're going to actually use the small formula. The small formula at first is going to give us the first and oldest date and then I'll show you how we can use the small formula with the count if formula to actually bring up only the next record and then skip over to the next smallest record or smallest date earliest date in this case so let's jump over to the calculations tab and I'm gonna make a column here called all dates I just put and bold that and then we're gonna do the first section of this so we're gonna go small and once we've set up that small, we're going to look at the array. So I've set up a structured table here, which is going to allow me to make reference to a dynamic range, which is also great so that if the user adds more records, this is automatically going to update. So we're going to do square bracket orders, I'm sorry, square bracket, and then it's going to show me a, few, a list of the field names that we have available to us to reference. In our case, like I said, we want to show ship date here, comma, and I'm going to show, I want to show the first, which is the earliest date in our data set, and that's where the K comes into place. So now that we've done that, I'm going to hit enter, and of course it's going to show me the oldest and earliest date. Let's change our column to have a short date uh, number format. So it's showing as 10-7-2014. I've sorted my ship date column on our table, you'll see. Uh, from oldest to newest, and you'll see that the oldest order that we have is 10 7 2014. So clearly that actually worked. So, why I did row here is so that when I drag this down right now, it's going to actually show 2 2, 3 3, 4 4 uh, as I continue to drag it down, just so I can show you what happens if I were to leave and use this exact formula without the count if formula. So, if I drag this down, you'll see that it's literally just going to copy every single record. So it's going to say, you know what, we only have one 10 7 2014, but we actually have uh, four records for 4 9 2014. So if we jump over to data orders, you'll notice that we've, of course, got four records, as you see by the count down on the bottom here. Okay. So that's not going to work. What we'll do is delete these. We're going to actually use the small formula. So we'll type in small. Uh, the array again is going to be our orders ship date array. So if you hit tab by the way and you start typing ship and then you hit tab, uh, that's going to automatically populate ship date for me. I'm going to close that square bracket to for that array. So we're going to look at order ship date. We want to see the smallest value in order ship date and comma. In this case, this is where we're going to put the kth value that we're going to show in this data set is actually going to be we're going to use the count if formula. So it's going to count the number of cells within a range that meets any given condition. So the condition is actually going to be, let's add orders before I continue here. Ship date again. So we're still looking at that same range. So anything in the uh, ship date column on our first original tab that is less than or equal to ampersand the date above here and then plus one. So now the reason we're doing this is, so we wanna see any records that are less than or equal to B3. So we don't have any records that are less than uh, B3, but it's also saying, okay, if there's multiple records that are less than or equal to B3, then show us uh, how many there actually are. So that's what that count if is gonna do. So if there was five 10, 7, 2014s, you'd see this value for the count if be 10, and then if we said plus one, that would give us the next smallest value in our data set. So if I hit enter, 049-2014, if I drag this down now, you'll see that our next smallest data set is 109 2014 
So one way that you can actually see how this formula is working because I'm not the greatest at explaining it, if you hit up the evaluate formula, I love using this tool, and you just hit evaluate, it'll actually show you and walk you through the steps on how the uh, formulas are being processed. So in this case, it's showing us uh, data orders is actually cell N3 through N141, the ship date again, N3 through 141, B4 is 41886, which is in this case 4-9-2014 in a short date format. And then if I click this one more time, it's saying that we actually have 5-0-4-9-2014 records in our data set. And then if we say plus one, that's going to give us our next record. Oh, I'm sorry. Five is the total number of records that are less than or equal to. So it would say, uh, so five is 10, seven, 2014. We have one record and then we have four records at zero, four, nine, 2014. So we're going to then add plus one and that's going to give us our next one here. So if you jump down one more, so if we said, okay, how many records do we have, uh, between before we go to 29, 2014, you'll see that we actually have 15 different records. So if we go back to calculations here and we go to our formulas, evaluate formula again, let's run through this really quickly. So anything that's less than or equal to 41892, so anything that's less than or equal to 10, 9, 2014, how many are there? How many records are there? And in this case, we should see that this is 15. And yes, of course it is. And then it's going to say plus one. And then that's going to give us 29, 2014. So our 16th record 16th smallest record is in fact 29 2014 and is that the case so if i highlight that you'll see down here the 16th record that is definitely correct so very cool stuff um what i'm going to do is just drag this down a little further what's going to happen is we're going to see a number error and it's going to try and cycle back through our data set to uh redo and go through uh displaying the smallest records again. So in order to get around that, what we're going to say is if I'm going to scroll back up, actually escape, let's go back up. I just hit control up arrow. That's going to bring me right back up to cell B2. I'm going to go down to the second cell. We're going to type in if error, if there's an error, as in like the number error that we just experienced down below, we're going to type in, uh, we want that cell to show up as blank. So now if I go double click that down, you'll see that that showed up as blank, but we're still cycling back through all of our numbers and data set and then re-displaying them again. We don't need to display them twice. So now that we know that, I can say, okay, let's go back up to this cell B4 and I'm gonna go if the above cell is equal to blank based on our if error statement. get back into that we'll do comma we're going to show the a blank cell and then if not it's going to just run through and show us the next record so we're going to close that using the if formula now if we double click that square box right there that's going to drag our formula all the way down to where we left off and you'll see that we don't have any duplicates which is extremely cool so now that we have that set up I'm going to actually drag this down to, let's just say 1,500-ish, which is more than three years worth of data. So if we had, you know, whatever, if we had uh, more than three years worth of days in here, we could actually show this data set just to make it dynamic. That should do. I think I dragged, let's just drag that all the way down. There we go, awesome. So you can also double click the little square box. That's gonna bring it down to where you've already dragged and pulled in your formulas. It's kind of a nice little trick there. Um, so now that we have that set up, the next thing that I'd like to do is create a, um, the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is create a validation list out of that date. So 
out of the dates that we have here. So I'm going to actually create a dynamic name range. So if we go over to data, go data validation, we're going to go create a list. Actually, the first thing I want to do, like I said, was create a new dynamic name range for all dates so that if we add new records, uh, we're going to be able to show them. So we're going to call this all dates calculations b3 so from b3 we want to use the index formula and count how many records we have if I go to 2000 here that's gonna show us more than enough information and then we go count if you're using if, if these values over here were text you'd use count a in this case we're going to use a count formula because these are actually numbers so if we do calculations to there and all this is going to do is say okay I'll actually I'll show you um, yeah what this is going to do essentially is from B3 we want to basically have a range from B3 to however many cells we count between B3 and 2000 and that's what this formula is essentially saying so it's going to say from B3 if we only have up to let's just say B25, it's going to stop at that and that's going to be our data range. If it has to be 26, it would show us that as well. 27 rate right up to 2000. Uh, if we have any records, it's going to allow this to be dynamic essentially. So we can close that and now we can create our data validation list. So if we go to data, go to data validation, select list. And in here we're going to type equals and we want to use all dates because that's the new uh, name range that we created for all dates and removing duplicates. So there you have it. So you'll see that that's all of these are in there in our data validation list instead of having duplicate records. Now, one of the other things I can do to show you that this is actually working and that it is, of course, dynamic. If I type in, let's just copy this over. Let's create another order, 1039, category six. Let's just say they bought the same item again. This guy really loves this part, the same quantity. And we're going to do for 0401, 2015. So let's see if that data automatically shows up in our list. You'll see it over here. You see that that updated based on uh, because of our structured reference that we have here it's automatically updating and displaying that and then if we go up to our drop down list that we have you'll see that that is also showing there now as well so that is all for today I think that uh, one of the nice things about having drop down uh, data validation lists is that you can use this for your dashboard so you can basically do anything with this so if you selected this date uh, for example Let's just change the way this is looking right now. Month. So I just changed the data format using the custom number formatting. And you'll see that that shows up as September 2014. Um, I should really show this as a day. So let's just go day day like that. So that's kind of cool. So the user could come in here, select any of these dates. And then you'll see that it shows up right here in our list and you can build a dashboard based off of that. Anyway, thanks for joining me today. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave comments below. I do appreciate you checking it out. We'll see you next time.